This was high noon for Robert Mugabe, though no one knew it at the time. Zimbabweans gathering outside the parliament where MPs were meeting to start impeachment procedures. The people here willing the legislators on. Zimbabwe is a country of a million shattered dreams. Mugabe's rule leaving people with little but their dignity. You never had the people at heart. 50-year-old Luke Kusena hasn't worked in years. Uh, we believe that uh, when he goes, uh, everybody will be eager, especially the investors will be eager, will be eager to come back to invest in the country and probably to create some employment. In an office down the street, an old political foe of Mugabe was preparing for what he thought would be a long impeachment process. Morgan Changarai has had to watch the military, once used as a tool of oppression, turn liberator. It may be unconstitutional, but it's a necessary evil. It is something that, that the people of Zimbabwe were desperate uh, to have. Outside, the future had already arrived. Zimbabwe forever changed by the news Mugabe had resigned by letter. Bye-bye, Mugabe! It took a while for people to understand what was happening. When they did, the streets were like wildfire. It was like four decades of despair turned into unbridled joy. Grateful crowds surrounded bemused soldiers in their tanks, refusing to crack a smile at first, breaking down when the free shoe shines started up. This one, I don't even know what, what is this. Others needed simply to rage. They're going to prison. People are going to be celebrating all night long. That's the parliament just down the street behind me. The sun has gone down. People are happy about that because they say it means the sun has gone down on the regime of Mugabe. Tomorrow may well indeed bring more uncertainty, but this was a taste of freedom few in Zimbabwe will forget. And Margaret Evans joins us from Harare. And, and Margaret, tell us about the man expected to take Mugabe's place. Well, Ian, his nickname is the Crocodile, so that gives you a little bit of an idea. That's because he has a reputation for brutality. Um, he's uh, Robert Mugabe's old intelligence chief. He's accused him some, of some very grave human rights abuses in the 1980s. He's the man who would have been in charge of the intimidation campaign at various elections, very uh, brutal intimid intimidation, various elections throughout the history of Zimbabwe. So obviously a lot of people worried about him. People who support him say he's modern, he's more in touch, and that he'll be better equipped to help uh, right uh, the Zimbabwean eco economy, which is really just at the bottom of a crevasse right now. It's such an interesting dichotomy because we've seen the celebration, and yet at the same time, this man has such an ominous past. As you've been talking to people, especially today, what are they saying to you? Well, a lot of people don't necessarily want to talk about it. Um, they certainly don't want to be seen to be criticizing someone who is being held responsible for helping to end four decades or nearly four decades of dictatorship. And so people are kind of cautious when you ask them about this, whether they trust him, are they just going from one dictator to another? Um, I was in the crowds today and one man actually was hearing me interview some people and afterwards he came up to me and he whispered in my ear, he said, you know this man is a killer and we know he's a killer too. But you can only fight one battle in a time, at a time, and we're going to wait to fight the next battle. And I guess the presumption is that that battle would be against him. And interesting that that man only dared whisper that in your ear as opposed to saying it out loud. Margaret, thank you very much. You're welcome.